Yes, math people, welcome back. Now, uh, this is the last uh, video that we're going to look at on equilibrium. A few more tricky examples. This is where you've got maybe a beam and um, it's maybe hanging right from something. So uh, we're looking at forces such as tension and that kind of thing. So there's a quick reminder again. Um, if you don't remember any of these points, just go back and have a look at, another, at one of the previous videos. I'm not explaining it again. Now, straight into the questions, let's go. So in the following diagram, you've got a uniform uh, beam, AB. So let's just label the start as A, the end as B. You've got that. Um, it's got a length of six meters. So maybe we could fill in that there as six meters. And uh, it's got a mass of 50 kilograms. It's uniform, which means obviously bang in the middle, we're gonna have 50 G. So there we go 50 G. And what does that mean? Well, that means you've got three meters on the left, three meters on the right, doesn't it? Yes. So let's just change that now. And we'll go three meters and three meters, there we go. Um, now it's held by two uh, vertical wires at C and D. So this is one vertical wire, this is the other vertical wire. And now in these wires, you're gonna have tensions, right? So you've got tension at C and tension at D. There we go. Now they've given us some of these positions. They said that AC is one meter. So if that's one meter, then what we should do is, well, from there to there is one meter, which means here to here must now be two meters, right? That seems useful. And now maybe let's just get rid of, well, this three meters down here. It's useless, let's get rid of it. There we go. Okay, goodbye. Um, and what else have we got? We've got A to D is X. Okay, so they haven't actually given us the distance there. Let's just label it as X. So we'll go with A to D, and we'll call that X. Put that over there. Um, and now what else have they told us? They told us a load of mass 30 kilograms is attached to B. So, you know, bang on the end, we've got 30 G coming down there. So let's fill that in as well. So that's our load, and that's 30 Gs over there. And now what happens? Well, it says now that the tension in the wire at D is three times the tension in the wire at C. And that makes sense, right? Because you've got this, uh, which is you know a lot closer to D, so the, uh, the tension in this string has got to be a fair bit higher. So now what we should do is set up an equation. We'll say TD is equal to three lots of TC. We've got that. And then we're back to our little routine again. So start looking at upwards forces, downwards forces. So upwards, we've got TC, TD is equal to, now the downwards forces, you've got 50 Gs, you've got 30 Gs, all together that's 80 Gs. Uh, do some substitution again. So we've got TC plus, now instead of writing TD, let's put three lots of TC uh, equals 80 G. So four TCs equal to 80 G, and that means TC is equal to 20 G. Lovely. Now, because TC is 20 G, uh, we can work out TD, right? TD, three times that. So TD equals three lots of 20 G, and so TD equals 60 Gs. So you've got 60 Gs, 20 Gs. Fill it in on the diagram, right? So 20 Gs here, 60 Gs there. Perfect, okay, real good. Uh, next thing we need to do is take moments, right? Standard thing. So hit yellow. I'm going to take moments about A again. So over there. So moments A. Actually, I'm going to change the pen to black. There we go. Now, um, let's talk about, let's talk about, you know, our, our forces that we're going to involve here. So to do some highlighting, we need to involve this one here, TC. We need to involve 50 Gs. And we need to involve TD, which is 60 Gs. And this one down here, 30 Gs. Okay, so let's kick off with clockwise is equal to anti-clockwise. Now clockwise moments are going to be caused by this 50G and this 30G, right? So uh, let's kick off with those. So we'll have 50G times by, and that's three meters away because it's bang in the middle, so times by three, plus uh, the 30G, which is right the way on the end. So that's just going to be 30G times by well, the whole length of the thing, uh, which was six meters, right? So times that by six equals. Now the anti-clockwise moments are gonna be caused by the 20 G, which is only one meter away from here. So that's gonna be, well, just 20 G times by one, which is 20 G plus, now we don't know the distance um, 
of a to d, so we can just call it x, right? And that's x times by 60g, so 60gx, right? Simplify everything down, neaten it up a little bit. 150g plus 180g equals 20g plus 60gx. Now we can get rid of g's everywhere because every single term has g. Uh, add this together, bring the 20 over to this side as well. So what's that going to give us? What's that? 330, take that away, 310, I think, on this side is equal to 60g. Nope, 60x, sorry. Uh, strike out the zeros there, we divide by 10 both sides. So we've got 31 is equal to 6x. And that means x is equal to 31 over 6. Or if we turn that into a mixed number, what have we got there? Uh, five, and, uh, 5 and a 6. There we go. 5 and a 6 metres. And there we go, there's our distance. Five and a six meters, um, and it seems reasonable, right? And just before just before the end of the rod, which was six meters. So that seems good, hopefully you've understood that. Hopefully it's all clear. And um, I believe that is your turn. So here's a practice question. Have a quick read through it, make sure you fill out a nice diagram, right? Uh, all the forces on there, tensions, um, all the weights, etc. cetera. Um, and then follow the steps, right? So set out, set out a couple of equations, upwards and downwards, then take moments, and I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, let's crack on. Now, um, the uniform beam with AB, so you've got A here, B here, um, we've got two vertical wires, one at C, one at D, and they gave us some distances as well. So hopefully you filled in, that is TC, that one is TD, uh, so that's C, that's D. Um, they told us that uh, AC is 2.5 meters, AD is 4.5 meters, which means that um, that distance there must just be like an extra two meters, right? Uh, to total 4.5. Um, we've got, what else? Um, oh, the actual mass of the beam itself, which was 60 kilograms. You've got to put that bang in the middle, so that's going to be at three meters, right? So maybe like here somewhere. And we'll put 60 G. That there is going to be three meters. Fill that in over there. Um, and then we've got uh, a mass which is attached to a point E, such that the tension in the wire at D is 1.4 times the tension in the wire at C. So, you know, what does that mean again? That means it's probably nearer to D than it is to C, right? So um, hopefully, let's just, I don't know, hopefully you guys have just put it about here somewhere. Um, 30 G going downwards. And we don't know the distance, so let's just call it X. And there it is. So... Decent enough diagram, let's get going. Now we were told the tension in the wire at D is 1.4 times the tension in the wire at C. So we can start off by saying that uh, TD is equal to 1.4 times by TC. And then let's start resolving upwards and downwards, so vertically, right? Vertically, we're gonna have TC plus TD is equal to, well, 60 and 30 G on the bottom, so 90 G in total. Let's do some substitution, so TD we were told, was 1.4 TC. So we'll sub that in now. So TC plus 1.4 TC is equal to 90 G. Uh, that's 2.4 TC is 90 G. And uh, divide that across. Um, so that is supposedly going to give us 37.5 G for TC. And now what we can do is take TC, sub it back into here, times it by 1.4 to get TD, right? So if we do that, TD should come out as, let's have a look here, 52.5 Gs. So let's fill this straight into the diagram, right? So 52.5 G and 37.5 G. So there we go. Uh, we've got our reaction forces. Now we need to take some moments. So we'll go with, let's go black pen, take some moments. And we're going to take moments about A. Can take it obviously in a variety of places, but should still get you to the same answer. So let's say that's A, and the forces that I need to look at are gonna be what, TC, 60G, TD, and 30Gs. So we'll start with clockwise equals, I'm just gonna put anti over there, and clockwise moments are gonna be created by the 60G and the 30G. So let's crack on with that, 60G times by, what's its distance uh, from A? That's gonna be three meters, so times by three, plus, 30g and we're multiplying that by x because we don't actually know that distance there. Um, now anti-clockwise moments, that's going to be created by tc. 
we know that that's 37.5 GeV. And multiply that by 2.5 plus, and then TD, which was 52.5 G times the pi, and that's going to be 4.5. There we go. Neaten it up a tiny bit, we've got what 180 G here, 30 GX over here. Uh, 37.5 times 2.5, uh, what is that going to give us? I think that's supposed to be 93.75 G. And then 52.5 times by 4.5 is supposed to give us 236.25 G. You can work in fractions, fractions obviously a bit neater, but uh, I'm just going to stick with this for now. Uh, bring that all over to uh, the other side, we'll have 30 G X comes out to, I think it's 150 G. And that comes out quite nicely actually, and that then is just going to give us um, X is 5 meters. Perfect. So five meters there, so in a decent position, just one meter from um, from the end, actually. So uh, that's it. Hopefully, you've got that correct. And if you have, then you have mastered the equilibrium section of this chapter. So thanks for watching. Um, if you've enjoyed what you've done here, if you've learned everything that you think you needed to learn, give us a thumbs up and uh, subscribe. And hopefully I'll see you in the next part, which is to do with tilting.